everyone. This is Friday, May 1st. Happy May to everybody. A couple of announcements first, and then we'll get on with our study today. Um, I was with Derek Sanford through a Zoom meeting yesterday. Derek's the lead pastor of Grace, which is a multi-campus church here in Erie. And he observed that uh, people are becoming fatigued. And I think that's true. Uh, I see it in people's faces. I see it um, uh, well, I, I just see it around. I'm sure you're feeling fatigued a little bit. So uh, even before we start with any more announcements, let me share with you the serenity prayer that we might uh, begin to clear our hearts for our devotional time in just a few minutes. Dear God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. Dear God, as we live one day at a time, enjoy one moment at a time, and accept hardships as the pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to God's will, so that I might be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, we will be looking at 1 Peter today, but we'll also be uh, doing some things that try to help calm our spirits and prepare us for what's, uh, what's in front. A couple uh, announcements. Uh, Chrissy Dugan, I think you can find links to her uh, exercise on our website and on our app. But Chrissy is uh, organizing a in-home, indoor scavenger hunt for Sunday at three o'clock for all of our elementary age children and, and, and younger. And uh, Chrissy will be uh, uh, announcing that. It's already on our, our, our website. But if you have children that are grades five and under, you might really enjoy a little bit of a child's activity at three o'clock on Sunday through the internet. So be sure to check out what, what Chrissy's doing there. Uh, the worship team last night posted a surprise uh, video of them uh, practicing and singing praises to God. It's always fun to be surprised like that. Last night, we had a tech meeting at the church with a small group of, of, of our technicians. And we're making plans right now for when the church is going to be allowed to open. I had some requests last night. Uh, can I be one of the 25 people that can come into the church this weekend or next weekend? Friends, it does not look like a church our size will be opening before the early or more likely the middle part of June. Um, we're a, a, a larger church and uh, we have constraints and limits. And but with that, one of the things we're looking to do is dispersing people better through our, the building, yet allowing people to take advantage of the service. Uh, we're making decisions to invest more heavily in live streaming. Uh, the equipment that will allow us to do it consistently over time. And with that, we can then um, um, televise, if you will, or, or um, project the services in the fellowship hall and the multi-purpose room and even the narthex. And that would allow us to uh, better maintain the six-foot rule. As I shared yesterday, it looks to me like masks are going to be a part of our future for a long time to come. It looks to me like... Uh, Maintaining self distance, uh, self distances like six feet is going to be pretty important in the days to come. And we're looking as a church to, to make that all work. Uh, if we decide to have two services so that we can again spread people out in different groups, uh, we're going to have to sanitize the church and the public areas between the services. So we're gearing up. We're uh, uh, getting other people involved and we'll keep you posted with all of that. The last announcement I want to make is continue to pray for Joanne Eimers, uh, her children, uh, Greg and Kathy, grandchildren, the entire uh, Eimers family. As Joanne continues to be in the St. Vincent's intensive care unit, we pray for her recuperation, her strength and her encouragement. But I do know the family's making some decisions and uh, we're, we're praying for, for the very best and the very, um, uh, the very best in all of that. Heavenly Father, we're about ready to start our study today from 1 Peter chapter 4. Open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. I love the song. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. 
We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, they will know we are Christians by our love. Linda Morris, sorry for the singing, but it uh, maybe reminds us in our hearts of the lyrics of that great song, that we will work with each other, we will work side by side, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will care for each other, we will be in relationship with each other. How does this relate to 1 Peter? Well, 1 Peter in his five chapters, he's writing from Rome. He's writing particularly to the Christians in Turkey. Uh, in both places, Rome and Turkey, the Christian populations being persecuted for a number of reasons. To encourage them in the early part of 1 Peter, Peter writes to them and reminds them that we are called to a royal priesthood, that we're called to be holy, and that theologically we are called to be new creations, new creatures filled with the Holy Spirit. He then practically deals with, with some of the groups, uh, men and women and families, slaves in the work, workplace, uh, and in the government, and how we as Christians should be exemplary in our, in our relationships there. We should be a model of good citizens. While we're not citizens of this world, but of another world, we're like foreigners and aliens that we're just passing through, that this world's not our home. But it is our temporary home. And as I was traveling overseas to an international country, I would abide by all the rules that I could in the other countries so that I could be exemplary. Even though I lived under the laws of the United States personally, I'd be following the rules in whatever country I was visiting. Likewise, we as Christians need to be a part of this world, but not really a part of this world. In today's text, 1 Peter chapter 4, 7 through 11, the end of all things is near. Now, in the first century, they anticipated Jesus' second coming to be very imminent, even within their lifetime, perhaps. We've learned over the centuries that God is waiting for that perfect time when uh, everyone that is to be born will be born, that everyone that has a chance to make a decision to be a follower of Jesus has that opportunity. And right now, it's just not that time. But with the way the circumstances are, you almost sense that things are gearing up. The end of all things is near. We don't know when, but we do know that day is coming. The world would tell you that we're progressing, that through human nature getting better and better, and through science and technology, we will someday have a utopian star-like, Star Wars or Star Trek-like world where all things are, are pretty sweet and pretty good. Well, let me tell you, history does not side with that. Uh, human nature appears to be what human nature is. Uh, technology um, is not going to be our savior in the terms of bringing uh, a, 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 a um, what do I want to say, a, a utopian-like peace over all the land. So what is? We believe in Christian faith. It's the presence of God. It's the Holy Spirit in us that allows the church or the Christians to be distinctive. And as we work to prepare this world for the coming of Jesus and we prepare ourselves for the um, coming of the next world, we live an exemplary life in society. But spiritually, we do so much more. We'll be preaching Sunday about standing firm in our faith. But today we look at uh, 1 Peter 4 and we read, therefore, be alert and sober minded. Be clear minded. Why? So that you can do two things. So that you can pray and so that you can love each other deeply. Pray and love. According to 1 Peter, this is the primary call upon the church as we reflect the love of Christ and the life of Christ to a world that needs the touch of Christ. We need to remember to pray. What is praying? It's a time where we get refreshed with the, with the freshness and the fresh water. It's like drinking from a water fountain and we take in from the fountains of God's spirit. We learn God's ways. We learn God's priorities. God sets our stage. He gives us um, priority every day. I pray, dear God, may I spend my time today doing the things you would have me to do. It's not us giving him our want list as much as he giving us uh, insight into the day that we um, have in front of us. 
I often take my day schedule, my day's calendar, the people that I know I'll be interacting with and say, God, may I be the flavor of Jesus in this person's life or in this situation. Peter goes on to write, above all, love each other deeply. Offer hospitality without grumbling. We're a society of grumblers. Can we do a whole day without grumbling? Can we do a whole week without grumbling? That's interesting. As a pastor, I get to hear a lot of grumbling and uh, I would be <laughs> welcomed uh, if, uh, if, 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 if we did less grumbling. But uh, it's part of the human nature and we need to continue to be sanctified. As God's spirit takes over, we'll be grumbling less. Uh, we'll be sinning less. What is sin? Sin is anything that separates us from God, ourselves, and others. You see, life in the spirit, life with God is relational. And it's a connection. It's a relationship. Sin is anything that breaks that relationship. So in terms of God, sin breaks my relationship with God. And then I need to be reconciled to God. In my capacities as a human, I can't do anything to, to bridge that gap. So God extends himself through Jesus the Christ, through the cross and resurrection, that we can become reunited with Christ, with God. And he gives us his spirit to give us extra strength in that. Then beyond that, uh, with ourselves. How many people do you know are anxious and out of sorts with themselves? We need to be made right with ourselves. We live with guilt. We live with self-imposed expectations and doubts and fears. We need to begin to clear the deck, if you will, and become the people God wants us to be, setting aside these things. In 1 John, we read that um, perfect love casts out all fear and that God is the example of perfect love. And as we grow in God's love, these other things have less control over us and we become more measured and more uh, sober-minded, if you will, or clear-minded. And of course, relationships with others. Uh, churches are famous for having um, bad relationships between them. I think our church does a pretty good job, but we need to continue to work at relationships between each other. I heard last night of a, of a, of a fracture in a relationship within our church. I've heard routinely of, of tensions between peoples in our church. And friends, if we can't get along with each other, it's going to be hard to get along with the world. We are modeled by being good employees. We are known for being exemplary in our relationships, whether it's with our employers or whether it's with one another, our spouses, our families. We need to keep working at being better. And only through the power of the Holy Spirit can we do this. Then Peter tells us that if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. I know that in my business career, when I would go to meetings, I would be speaking for different groups sometimes. I wanted to be certain that I would speak the words that were true to the person or the group that I was representing and that I not mis misconstrue or miscommunicate what their positions are. Do we think carefully? Do we think mindfully? Or are we careless in our words? Every time we speak, we should be thinking these could be the words of God. How should I sound? What is my tone and how should I be? If anyone serves, they should serve in the strength that God provides. We can't possibly serve sufficiently without the help of God in our hearts. In all these things, may God be praised through Jesus the Christ, that Jesus might have power and glory forever and ever. Peter found strength in working and being a part of a kingdom that transcends this world into the next. He finds strength knowing that the God over all of creation, the God of all the universes loves us and cares for us and breathes life into us and is intimate and personal with all who turn towards him. But in this, we're to be marked by our relationships, that we are one in the spirit, one in the Lord, one with each other, and by our love, the world will know that we are Christians. Friends, I pray for you to have a good weekend, a good day. Uh, I look forward to you tuning into the service on Sunday uh, on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock. 
We're uh, developing ways to get it onto YouTube and then on our website and app even faster. But we'll be preaching from 1 Peter chapter 5. So if you want to prepare yourself for Sunday's message, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. And then we'll be following that up with a devotional on Tuesday from 1 Peter chapter 5. And if you remember, 9 o'clock Monday, Sue Fuller will be leading us in a time of prayer. And as I close out with you tonight, today, I'd like to recite with you and for you the reminder that God loves us. So I'm going to recite the 23rd Psalm and then finish with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores our soul. Don't you want to be restored? Restores our soul. He guides us along the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, because he is righteous. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For his rod and his staff, they comfort us, and he is with me. He prepares a table before us, even in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And one day we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Will you close with me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Why? For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the glory. Thine kingdom forever and ever. In this I pray, amen. God bless. Hope you have a great first day of May, and we'll look forward to seeing you at church on Sunday at 10 o'clock, Facebook Live. God bless.